Hi, I'm Danielle Chalk, president of QU Eats, and um, welcome to our second webisode of the semester. This one's theme is going to be healthifying the holidays. So before you X out of your browser, I'll have you know I'm Hungarian and Polish, so there's a, there's nothing that anybody can tell me that's going to make me forego the stuffing during Thanksgiving. But I am going to give you a couple of tips on healthifying a couple of our favorite dishes as well as serving sizes. So uh, let me introduce what we're going to be doing today. So for our first item, we're going to be doing a very simple sweet potato casserole with uh, pecans and maple. Um, it's a nice alternative to what's become one of the quintessential Thanksgiving dishes, uh, Grandma's marshmallow sweet potato casserole. And I'm not sure whoever condone allowing marshmallows on the dinner table, but um, that casserole in a half a cup can pack in um, 210 calories, 80 of which is from fat, 9 grams of fat, 6 of which is saturated. Um, and on top of that, you're getting 15 grams of sugar. So it's a little bit excessive. And uh, in just a half cup serving, at that point, just save it for the dessert table. So what we're going to be doing is taking cubed and boiled sweet potatoes. You can do it just by um, boiling them 10 to 12 minutes, um, skinning them, cubing them in about one inch cubes. So we're gonna take these um, and mix it in with uh, a third cup of maple syrup. I chose that just because I think the flavors complement well. You can use honey, you can use agave. Um, and we're also going to be mixing in um, cinnamon and a bit of brown sugar. So over here, this isn't necessarily on the heat, we just don't happen to have a mixing bowl in the room. Um, I'm going to be mixing in two tablespoons of cinnamon, half of the maple syrup and sweet potatoes. And if you have an electric mixer, um, it would come in tremendous handy, but I'm going to use my manpower and I'm going to be mashing these by hand. All right, so what we have here are our sweet potatoes all combined with our maple syrup as well as our cinnamon. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in our casserole dish. This is an eight by eight. And what's great about sweet potatoes when you see them on the Thanksgiving table versus our, it's, starchy counterpart of mashed potatoes that are uh, jam-packed with butter and uh, and cheese is you're getting vitamin A through beta carotene. So at least you're getting some benefits. Um, it's definitely the better alternative to go for it than the mashed potatoes. But when you're looking at it with a bunch of um, sugary goo on top like marshmallows, make sure that you're moderate in your serving sizes. So one of my favorite parts about Thanksgiving are the pecans. So we're gonna get our omegas in the dish. Um, so on top of the casserole as we have it, we're gonna sprinkle over with pecans. Distribute them how you'd like. I'm gonna add about between um, a third and a half a cup. And then, Because we're cutting our marshmallows, we can afford to add a little extra flavor to the top. So just so it uh, caramelizes nicely, we're gonna add some brown sugar. It's one tablespoon of brown sugar uh, combined with a half teaspoon of cinnamon that we're gonna crumble over the top. Okay, and our oven is preheated to 350 degrees, and we're gonna go ahead and put this in, and we'll check it after 40 minutes. So why our sweet potato casserole is in the oven, um, we're going to do another little segment and I know that Americans, speaking as one, um, love convenience and cost efficiency. So when you go to the grocery store and you see a pre-made pie crust that you can purchase for somewhere from 3 to $4, it seems like the logical solution for your Thanksgiving um, time crunch. Well here is what it takes to make a pie crust. Here in front of you, I have one cup of all-purpose flour combined with one cup of whole wheat pastry flour, adding a little fiber into the dish, four tablespoons of canola oil, and it's going to take about two to three tablespoons of ice water. And in here as well is a um, quarter teaspoon of salt. That's everything you need for a pie crust. But if you look at the ingredients of the ones that you buy in the store, you're going to see ingredients like partially hydrogenated oil, um, partially hydrogenated lard, which just does not sound appealing on any level, um, corn syrup, um, additives such as preservatives, artificial flavors, and artificial coloring. 
So if it's this simple, then um, why not just take the initiative to do it ourselves, and then we can cut things like the hydrogenated oils, which um, if you're not familiar with that term, if you see that on an uh, ingredient label, it's code word for trans fats. So we know that trans fats are a no-go. So uh, let's begin with our pie crust. So first starts, we're going to take our dry ingredients, that's the whole wheat beast tree flour, the all-purpose flour, and the salt, and put it in a medium-sized bowl. And here, you're just going to create a little well with your fingers. We're going to take our four tablespoons of canola oil, and we're going to, for starts, we're going to add in two tablespoons of the ice water. We might need to add more as we go. As we know, since oil doesn't combine with water, we'll give it a quick stir. And it's going to go right into our little well. And then just slowly combine for about 30 seconds. It's going to start to make a crumbly dough. And as we can see here, since it's not combined right off the bat, this is our cue to add one more tablespoon of water. So after mixing for about 30 seconds, we have a nice composed dough. So we have our well-floured surface, and then we're going to take our makeshift rolling pin. Yeah, we get it, we're in college. and roll out our pie crust. Okay, so I folded it in half so it's a little bit easier to get in the pan and then we'll work with it a bit more to get it to the right shape. So now, you might ask why we used canola oil, because I know it's a little bit unconventional for a pie crust. We know if we make them at home, it's usually butter. Uh, with butter, even though you're cutting the uh, trans fats that you're getting from the uh, store-bought crust, you're still adding saturated fat. So with canola oil, you're getting heart healthy fats and uh, you're cutting all of your saturated fat out of the dish. So that's our little uh, healthifying the holidays tip for you today. So just like that, in less than 10 minutes, we have our heart healthy-ish pie crust. Um, so it's a much better alternative. Um, you can either freeze this as is, um, depending on whether you need a bake or no bake um, or pre-baked pie crust in your recipe. Um, the ones I'm going to make for my roommate is going to be a no bake. It's going to be uh, frozen. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this in the oven at uh, 350 degrees for about 10 minutes and then we'll check it. So while our food cooks in the oven, I have to keep you guys occupied somehow. So we're going to do a fun little game on serving sizes. Um, so, somewhere um, along the way, since the Pilgrims, we've lost the art of serving sizes for Thanksgiving. Um, so we're going to go through um, a little uh, crashed course in what it actually looks like um, and what our plate should look like when it's compiled. The iPhone. This is the equivalent to about four ounces of, um, of meat. So our turkey should be about the size of this iPhone. And in this alone, it packs in 25 grams of protein, which is plenty for one sitting. Um, so try to, match your, try to match your turkey to your iPhone. Uh, for sweet potato casserole, um, and now this is more so for one like the one that we're preparing right now. If you have marshmallows on top, then you might want to make it even smaller than this. But this roll of packing tape here is about the size that you want um, a sweet potato casserole to look like. And in that, you're still getting 50% of your RDA of uh, vitamin A. And it's starchy counterpart that we talked about earlier. Um, potatoes, especially if they are mashed with um, lots of fats, all of Paula Deen's favorites like butter and uh, cheese, you want your mashed potatoes to be about the size of a roll of scotch tape. And now onto our spool of thread. We're not doing arts and crafts. This in the palm of your hand is about the size that a mound of cranberry relish should be like on your plate. Um, and I know that you're going to argue that cranberries are a fruit and they're a great source of antioxidants as well as vitamin C. But unfortunately, the Thanksgiving version is a gelatinous mass of added sugar. Um, so a half a cup of the uh, cranberry relish will run you about 52 grams of sugar. So be wary of that since we're not even to the desserts yet. 
Um, our apple here is about the size, um, you don't want a dinner roll to be any bigger than this. And luckily the soap's not something that we're going to be incorporating into any of the dishes, but um, the size of a bar of soap is um, the biggest that you want a serving size of stuffing to be. And as a Hungarian, this is really hard for me to deal with, um, but that's about what you want to keep it to, um, because you are, it's very carby as well as a, a lot of fats from especially the sausage type. And, and our light bulb, here's our best food for thought, um, the size of this light bulb is um, the biggest you want a slice of pie to look like. So um, this for a pumpkin pie will run you about 200 calories and 13 grams of sugar. And um, in case you were wondering, pumpkin pie is definitely the one you want to opt for on the table. Um, apple's going to be double crusted, it's going to have a lot of fats in it, um, especially the trans fat if you're doing a store-bought crust. Um, and the pecan pie is going to have a ton of added sugar. So pumpkin is going to be um, a good source of vitamin A and your best bet on this bread. So, if we were to compile this all together onto our plate, um, obviously a light bulb's not edible, um, but the gaps is where you want to fill in a lot of vegetables. So you want to add a lot of color to your plate, um, and you want to make sure they're not the ones that are doused in um, creamy dressings and sauces and uh, covered in breadcrumbs. Play your cards right, you won't end up with a 4,000 to 4,500 um, calorie day, which is what the average American consumes on Thanksgiving. So hopefully that raises a red flag that that's about two to three times what you're supposed to consume in a single day. So unless your food coma is going to last you three days, you might want to stick to your portion sizes. So we're ready to see our final products. We have our nice golden pie crust, minus all the trans fats and our sweet potato casserole. So for bringing this one to the table um, and trying to uh, create a new tradition versus our, uh, our grandma's marshmallow casserole, we went from 210 calories to 160 and a half cup. Um, we went from nine grams of fat to five and from six grams of saturated fat to only one. Um, so you're getting the same nutrients from your sweet potatoes, but um, you're getting it in the best way you can for your body. So my best suggestion to you this Thanksgiving is to bring a new tradition to the family table. Um, and be mindful and watch your serving sizes, but still enjoy yourself and your family's company. So again, thank you for tuning in to Q Eats' uh, second webisode of the semester. Uh, check us out on Facebook, um, and you can find our blog there, which will have all of the recipes posted, um, as well as the nutritional values. So um, have a happy Thanksgiving, and thank you again.